I am super excited to be here and do this video today because I have been waiting for months to try Project X Cloud. As you may know, I have an iPhone and due to Apple's game streaming app policies or how they handle game streaming apps on the App Store, none of the streaming services like Stadia or xCloud or GeForce Now are expected to be on the App Store anytime soon. Of course, that could change. But in the meantime, I still want to have a way to try them. So what I did was I went out to find the best Android experience that I could buy. Ooh, mm, that's, that's a bit, that's too much money, too much money. So what I did was I went out to find the best budget, uh, lower, 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 lower. So what I did was I went out to find a phone that was under $100 that I could use to try Project X Cloud. And I settled on the $80 Galaxy A10e, but also my friend had an old budget Android phone from a few years ago, the Samsung Galaxy J7 Sky Pro that he gave me that's running Android version 6, which is the minimum version of Android that's recommended for Project xCloud. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we have a look at both of these today in a scientific demonstration because I know my viewers and I know my channel and I know that you guys don't want to just see someone sit here and play some games on a phone. So instead I'm going to do a scientific demonstration and I know the last time it was really immature and I pulled out like some wrestling figures and it was really dumb and I apologize for that but I listened to you guys' feedback and this time we're going to do Power Rangers figures. So let's say this is the phone playing the game and this is the input from the controller. So this would be more so like, this is with the J7 Sky Pro. So I'm gonna hit the button and then there's the reaction. So I'm hitting the button and there's the reaction. So let's hop over to the A10e. So I'm hitting the button and then there's the reaction. So as you can see, the Galaxy A10e is a bit faster, but both are still playable on relatively minimal hardware. So if you enjoyed this video. Uh, so. That's it? What do you mean that's it? Like every video doesn't have to be 20 hours and have 10,000 different like transitions. Sometimes you just make a simple video. And why are you playing with dolls again? I'm not gonna have this conversation with you again. These are not dolls, they are action figures. Do you not see the posability and the weapons? There is a huge okay. difference. Why don't you just call a secret gaming man? Because this again is pathetic. Well, I don't know if you watched the last video with the detective, but Secret Game Man is dead. So there's no calling Secret Game Man this time. And plus people don't really want to see gameplay. Yeah, he's not dead just because he fell down a few times. And I don't think that detective guy knew his job. Maybe you should have called a doctor. Okay, regardless if I should have called a doctor or not. It doesn't matter if Secret Gaming Man's still alive. I'm doing these videos myself. People want to see me and my scientific opinions and what I think. They don't want to see some Secret Gaming Man and all this stuff. I'm the genius here. I run you know this what? channel. I'm it's called Mike Checks It Out. It's not called Secret Gaming Man Plays Games. Okay. Into the Secret Gaming Man important. intro so we can get this show on the road. Secret Gaming Man, the world is in peril. They need you.
Welcome to another episode of Secret Gaming Man. And before we start this episode, it is very important to make sure that someone is dead before having a funeral for them, or the funeral could be very awkward. I know from firsthand experience. But we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about these budget Android phones and if Project X Cloud is playable on them. So I have here the Galaxy J7 Sky Pro that is currently running Android version 6.0.1 and the minimum version for Project X Cloud is version 6. So will this even play the games? Well, let's start with this one and find out. And of course, in order to play this, you need a Bluetooth controller. So I have the Xbox Elite controller, which actually costs more than both of these phones combined. And then the other important thing to have is a pair of secret gaming hands sold separately. All right, so let's hop in here. We have our controller paired up, and this is on the J7 Sky Pro. So let's play us a couple of games. How about we start with racing? Forza Horizon 4. If I can actually navigate to the part where it says play. There we go. Oh, it's already crashed. Okay, let's try this again. So far, it appears we haven't had the strongest experience with the, the xCloud app. Ah, now it's finally loading. All right, we are in the game. Okay, so, so far, honestly, driving-wise, this doesn't seem too bad. Oh, hit that car. All right, let's have a race and see what this experience is like. Now, clearly the other racers are cheating, which is why I'm not doing as well. Now, I think 11 out of 12 is actually a respectable place to be in. So this is Forza Horizon 4, where the purpose of this game is to swerve across the road, which of course, I'm excellent at it because I'm a secret agent. And where it says position, 11 out of 12 actually means how many times I've swerved. So as you see, I'm about to win the game. And each crack in the windshield is basically like your leveling tree. So the reason that I have all these cracks in my windshield is because I'm leveling up so much. So it may appear that I'm racing poorly but I'm actually doing fairly well. So you can get an idea of the one-to-one -one from the controller movements to what it's translating to in the car. Please let this torture race end. So overall, Forza Horizon was kind of playable. The lag did throw me off on the turns, but for one, this is a game that I really don't play that often with the controller, I have a racing wheel. And two, it's also a game that I'm just generally not good at. So some of it could have been my skill, but I would say that the lag was enough to kind of throw me off where I couldn't even get past a regular race. Whereas I feel like if I was playing locally, I could have at least gotten maybe sixth place. But we're gonna have a look at Streets of Rage 4, which is more of a 2D beat em up. All right, you guys, we're going to the streets, the Project X Cloud streets. And so far, as far as load times, it seems like those have been pretty much the same as on console. This seems perfectly playable, honestly. It's rude to stab people, except for when the player is doing it. I think I might have actually beat the game. I'm proud of myself. I'm doing so well. Streets of Rage. It looks like these streets are in rage with my mad skills. Well, I won the game. So let's try something else. The other thing to note is the reason I'm tapping the screen is because hitting the home button on the Xbox controller doesn't actually bring you to this menu, you have to use the screen. Depending on the phone, it might 
just take you back out of the app completely. But the next game we're going to have a look at is Halo Master Chief Collection. And how about with this one, we do the ultimate latency test and play a little bit of online multiplayer. So we're just going to do a social game. Some eight player free for all. Doesn't that sound exciting? Now I don't want you to feel embarrassed for the other people when they lose. Just know that it's part of the game. All right, this is kind of our input test. Is it possible to get a kill? I got killed. You know, this doesn't feel too bad, honestly. Now, you're still gonna be at a severe disadvantage. Maybe not super severe, but you'll still be at a disadvantage to someone that's playing locally. But this is actually a pretty playable experience, especially considering that I'm streaming this while playing online. That this phone doesn't even have the greatest wireless antenna or even the latest Bluetooth standard. So we'll have to see what happens when we hop over to the A10e. But surprisingly, this has been okay so far. Oh wow, kill somebody. You saw that, I killed somebody. Really? Really, this is the kind of respect that you show a secret agent on a mission. Kids these days. Kids these days. Oh yeah. Get back in the groove here. So yeah, this is a very playable, surprisingly playable experience even in multiplayer. I've been mainly playing the campaign on my own. But I'm honestly having a lot of fun. I tried to cheap him, it didn't work. So that was a sample of the experience on the Galaxy J7 Sky Pro. Why is the name so long? It seems like the more budget it gets, the more stuff they add to the name to make it seem fancy. Anyway, that was that experience. But what about the A10e? Well, let's have a dramatic cut. And I'll be back with the A10e. And we are back with the Samsung Galaxy A10e. So let's see how this experience is on another budget phone that's running Android version 10. So in-app performance is not great, it's about the same, but I was able to get the game to load a lot quicker, as in the app didn't crash three times when I tried to start it. So we're already off to a better start than we were with the Sky Pro. And we're starting again with Forza Horizon 4. Huh, so far this has been a way more playable experience. doing excellent you guys don't don't worry about it okay secret agents occasionally they run into snags especially on the road oh yeah here we go up oh, nailed it that was an excellent fast and the furious style turn which is exactly what i was going for i finished again with this phone it's the same thing so you have to tap to bring up the menu but I believe this phone has swipe control, so you can swipe and then hit back, and then it'll ask if you want to quit the game. That race left me enraged, so let's hop back into Streets of Rage 4. I will say for Horizon, despite how I did in the race, which I got cheated, it was a lot better than with the Sky Pro. So, so far, that's one game that at least seems improved by faster processor and better Bluetooth technology because this phone does have Bluetooth 5.0. All right, so let's go. We are enraged. We want to get to the fight. We're going back to the streets. All our lives we had to fight. Let's just see what happens here. We're enraged in these streets of rage. And I got stabbed again. You know, stabbing people in any form, video game or real life, is, it's considered rude in a lot of countries. So this game so far, it feels a half a second snappier, but the input latency isn't as noticeable as on Forza Horizon. We'll have to see how Halo plays after this, 
but Forza was definitely the worst as far as input latency so far out of the three games that we've tried. I won the game. I won it. I won the whole game. We're not. I won. I won. So let's go ahead and hop back into the Master Chief Collection. Let's play us another online free-for-all. Let's see how this experience compares to the Sky Pro. Professional. Like me. Secret Gamer Man. Hmm, it's taking quite a while to find players. Maybe people just don't want to catch these hands today. But that's understandable. I got a kill. That's all that matters. So I am experiencing lag in this game, but this is more so online lag, not input related lag. But so far, so far this experience Again, it's a little bit better. Really? You're gonna disrespect me in the middle of my sentence? I'll teach you. Why are there so many explosions? It's such a fast paced map. It does kind of put you at a disadvantage. Come on, how many times are I gonna miss that beat down? How? How many? Do I have to do the full twist? Is there a reason to do the full twist every time I die? Serves him right. Catching these secret gaming hands. Really? The insanity of these experiences today. It's taught me a lot. While Game Pass doesn't have a ways to go, it's still a playable experience. And these were with probably some of the cheapest Android phones you could find. And it's not like this is an old flagship phone. These are both budget phones when they came out. So considering that, and the fact that I was able to hook up the controller and still be able to play them, like yes, the app runs like garbage on these phones, but once you actually get into the game, it's completely fine. And the purpose of me testing it on the worst possible experience is just to see like, hey, Lowest common denominator. What is the experience that I can expect? And surprisingly, in both cases, the experience is really good. And the fact that xCloud is just an added bonus to if you already have Game Pass Ultimate, which is about $15 a month. So you get the games to play locally on your Xbox. There's also PC Game Pass, you get those games as well. And then on top of that, you get the streaming included. I think that xCloud is one of the better values, even though the game library is a bit limited even in comparison to Stadia, but you're not really paying anything extra for these games. Whereas Stadia, you pay for a subscription to get higher quality. This, you're paying for a subscription to have access to these games that you can play on several different platforms. So from a value proposition, and the fact that you can pretty much apparently run this on a potato, I think that the xCloud gaming experience is pretty cool. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to tell a friend and tell a coworker like, share, and subscribe. And Mike will be back on Saturday with his thoughts on today's Apple event. But until then, stay peachy keen. And stay secret. Wait, does that make sense?